Who wants to live forever? In the Western civilization, there was a strange tradition that lasted for centuries. Older people were granted with gifts in deep violet color. Why? Violet was considered a color next to black, a color of mourning and death. So violet gifts said, happy birthday. Now you're one year closer to death. Deal with it, memento mori. My grandpa would never accept a violet gift as he was convinced that he would be immortal. He had a strong motivation to wait for a cure that would let us live forever. With such motivation, he overcame leukemia, skin cancer, and sepsis. He was afraid of viruses. For one moment, he was so obsessed that our small dog is a dangerous vector of lethal viruses. To cease fire on grandpa versus dog war, my brother and I counterfeited an expert's opinion of life science university professors and put on these papers all stamps we found in our parents' office. Thankfully, we ended this whole fiasco and grandpa did not chase the dog away from our home. Eventually, it was a human vector that brought a virus to my grandpa. He got COVID-19 when he was in the hospital and sadly passed away. It was a great trauma for me as all hope for immortality for my grandpa had gone. The miraculous cure never appealed for him, but it may for the next generations and maybe we should prepare for living forever. On February 21st in 2011, Time magazine announced on the cover, year 2045, the year man becomes immortal. It's only 22 years from now. Why prudent time would put such a headline without a question mark? What science has achieved till now to be so sure with promising us immortality? And throughout all human history, we are self-conscious animals who are aware of the fact of our vulnerability. We are species prone for diseases, predators, hunger, all factors which lead us to inevitable death. And because of that, we started to believe in some forms of transgressions to make us stronger and bigger. Human beliefs created human-looking gods, heroes, saints, and internal living spirits. Because death and the beyond is a centerpiece of all of the religions, cults, and myths. And we accept death under a one condition. There has to be something more, and we should be the chosen ones who will deserve a decent afterlife. Egyptians believe that a properly conserved body of a pharaoh will assure him with internal life in luxury. Greeks poured blood of sacrificed animals to give a drink to their first sea ghosts of predators. Christians lit candles in churches for their past significant ones. Of course, the effectiveness of all of the mentioned treatments is rather questionable and some people look for solutions in science. Science has already made a lot for our longevity. We suffer less and live longer than previous generations, but science has also showed how small and insignificant human life is on the scale of the universe. As Polish sci-fi writer Stanisław Lem noted, if the existence of the universe could be defined as a 24 hours a day, the existence of all humanity lasts two seconds. It's blink of an eye. It might sound brutal, but would any almighty God of the universe take care of such an unfurl phenomenon as humanity? Maybe we should take care of ourselves and create new improved beings. This leads us straight to the concept of transhumanity. Transhumanism is a way of using science and biological tools towards the improvement of a human being. The concept itself has lots of followers, as well as many critics. The followers appeared throughout all human history. René Descartes described it as an inevitable future for humans. Russian cosmic philosophers described it as a moral imperative. Nietzsche defined Ubermensch. British intellectual Titan siblings, Huxley brothers, were great admirers of transhumanism, and American tech prodigy Ray Kurzweil just started to count down the clock till transhumanity will be our new reality. The critics attack from two sides. The hard-boiled scientists try to prove our body's incapacity to last forever. As Genesis Steve Jones stated, we should change the genetic code building blocks from ACGT to HYPE, suggesting that transhumanist ideas are overhyped, blown up, and delusive. Whereas humanists are criticizing the aspect of injustice. Because as you know, death is an ultimate act of justice. Whether you're good or bad, rich or poor, we're all dying. What we'll do if evil will live forever? 
For example, as any new technology, transhumanity will distribute in inequality, affordable only by billionaires, dictators, and powerful politicians. Would we like to live in such a world? Just think about ancient Egypt. Only the pharaoh, his family, and court members were equipped for internal life with pyramids, golden coffins, amulets, and gifts. And all the humbles of Egypt were just buried in the ground and their decaying body had no chance to live an afterlife. As transhumanism's development relies on technology, no wonder it is hardly supported by the tech gurus of the world. As we live in the era of new digitally-based economy, the wealthiest companies are usually steered by extremely rich, powerful, and well-educated SEM future visionaries. Those people are behind the success of a so-called GAFAM economy. So Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft. They're strong supporters of transhumanism. More important, they are huge investors, putting virtually hundreds of millions of dollars into research and development of transhumanist technology. There are two reasons behind their eager efforts. First, they already have achieved everything they wanted to as a mortal person, and being the first man on Mars is the only thing left on their bucket list, so the only thing they could crave for is immortality. And second, could you imagine a better and more profitable business than making people immortal? There are two paths of development, although it is possible that at one moment both paths could be interweaved. The first path refers to biology and genetics. It relies on attempts to enhance the life of our bodies with use of modifications. Such an approach will allow us to keep our bodies in the best possible shape and replace all exploited and malfunctioning cells with new fresh parts in mint condition. The second path refers to information technology and electronics. In this case, we would have a wide choice of possibilities, from digitalization of our brain and living in virtual reality, to replacing brain or even entire body with more durable equivalent, like silicon-based brain. In the latter case, you could imagine that we could go beyond human body's limitations and live in the void space of the cosmos, have additional senses, use telepathic communication, or even make advanced computing in fractions of seconds. You may think that it sounds like science fiction and my talk refers to some distant future, but remember, due to time, only 22 years now divide us from immortality. And some of the solutions are already on the table. Let's take a look on the progress on the first path. There's this Princeton graduate, Arthur D. Levinson. He runs a company named Calico, and its main mission is to explore the lifespan through the constructing aging biology and find a biotechnological way to prevent it. As PhD Eugene Melamut states, aging is like a snowball, exponentially growing and gaining momentum as it rolls down the hill. Can we delay its start or reduce its speed? We believe the answer to these questions lies in system biology. The answer actually lies in a section of our body's DNA called telomeres. They are found on each end of our chromosomes and they do affect our aging process. Because during the process of cell division, while parent cells are dividing into daughter cells, telomeres shorten. It is caused because they are productors of our DNA. And because of our chromosomes and because of them, our DNA is not getting damaged by every cell division and we all have our genes. But when telomeres are getting so short that chromosomes cannot replicate anymore, an apoptosis occurs. In other words, the cell dies. And as any new cell continues to undergo an apoptosis, we age. So could we do anything with this telomere shortening? Well, in 2015, Stanford Medical School researchers were actually able to extend telomeres proteins by using modified RNA. RNA normally carries information about coding from our DNA into some certain cell. It unfortunately lasted only for 48 hours, but they have discovered that usage of modified RNA made telomeres longer by 10%, and the treated cells were able to divide 30 times more than the regular ones. As co-author of this study, John Cook said, this study is the first step towards the development of telomere extension to improve cell therapies and possibly treat the disorders of accelerated aging in humans. But preventing telomere shortening is not only a way to slow down aging, but also a way to deliver our bodies from fatal diseases. There was this study conducted by Telomere's Mendelian Randomization Collaboration, in which they have concluded that there was a strong association between cancer risk and telomere shortening. As the cell becomes cancerous, it divides more and more, which contributes to the telomere shortening. Then, as you already know, while telomeres are getting shorter, 
the cell dies. As you may see, there is an abundance of studies currently being conducted as a way to see if we could prolong human life and put in doubt Steve Jones' assertive thesis that we should change the genetic code building blocks from ACGT to HYPE. Harnessing our minds and creativity could push the envelope and transgress the body's limitations. We should look into the future like my grandpa, with hope and strong confidence that will concur our level in perfection. Some people might say that his high hopes were just the proof of naivety. But I think that he was just a foresighter who never cared about the opinions of pessimists. If there's will, there's a way. There's this famous story when some bozos from some important science society in America declared, it is impossible to send human voice through a metal wire. A few years later, Alexander Graham Bell patented a phone. Recall it when somebody says to you, you can't live forever. Thank you.